Alright guys and girls, I'm Obsidian Ant and welcome to 3306. This is where I take a look at the news and happenings in and around Elite Dangerous. This week, Frontier announced the dates for the second Fleet Carrier Beta. Commander 100 Rub releases the results of a massive Fleet Carrier poll and a new Buckyball run is about to begin. The second beta for Fleet Carriers is set to begin on Monday the 11th of May. It will then run for two weeks ending on the 26th of May. As mentioned previously, this second beta will be available for PC users in addition for the first time to console users. The beta of course will be containing all of the updates for fleet carriers. Now on the PC you will be able to access the update in the usual manner directly from the game launcher. For consoles things will work a little differently. The process is still relatively simple however, console users should simply visit the link that is on screen right now, it's also listed in the video description. And from here, you'll be able to log in using either your PlayStation Network account or your Xbox One account. Once logged in, simply follow the instructions on the screen to generate a beta code. You'll then be able to redeem this code on your console. Now there is an important note here, as soon as the code is redeemed, it will begin downloading the beta. The beta is a full install of the game that is separate from the live version, and if you redeem the code before the 11th of May, you will download the current internal build of the beta, however you will not have access to it. Once the 11th of May arrives however, your console will then download the latest build, at which point you will be able to access the update. And do remember that your beta account will be a copy of your main game account as it stood on the 30th of April. Also, everything you do on beta stays in beta. No progress that you make there will move across to the live account. It's been a little over a month since the announcement of the massive community-led project, the Deep Space Support Array, and the list of sign-ups continues to grow. The aim of the project is to build a network of fleet carriers spread across the entire galaxy with up to three carriers situated in each galactic region. The DSSA network tracker currently shows around 100 fleet carriers signed up for the project with approximately 49 carriers in the preparation phase. The project then will provide players with a network of support vessels, essentially no matter where you are in the depths of space, you should never be too far away from a place to repair, refuel and restock. Naturally, this is a massive undertaking. Firstly, it will require huge efforts to get the carriers situated, but beyond that, the restocking and resupply of the carriers will naturally be a thing, especially for any of the carriers that find themselves to be particularly busy. Whilst the project itself is largely being organised by the Fleetcom team, carriers themselves will be run and maintained by individual carrier owners and any groups that they choose to enlist. The Galactic Mapping Project, meanwhile, will list any officially recognised DSSA carriers on their website, enabling players to better track their location. Without a doubt then, this is a hugely ambitious project and one I'm very keen to see how it all plays out. The Anti-Xeno Initiative recently conducted a poll on fleet carriers, asking participants a wide range of questions about the vessels. Questions included subjects such as whether or not squadrons should have the ability to own carriers, to if people felt carriers should have upkeep, with many other questions included as well. It was a pretty extensive piece of data there, and it seems very, very balanced and well thought out. Now, many of the results are not at all surprising and seem to echo the general sentiments that the community has expressed over the past month or so. So let's take a look at a few of these. Uh, over 50% of people would like to see upkeep removed from carriers, whilst more than 85% do not like the decommissioning system, with a similar amount instead preferring a mothballing system. There was also a lot of interest in uh, data in services, such as a request for material traders being added to carriers, in addition to the ability to sell engineered ships. Now, in terms of rejigging things around a little bit, uh, the ability to have a shipyard or ship storage as a core service was very highly rated. Uh, basically, removing the shipyard from an optional service over to core services, this makes a lot of sense, as it is, of course, a fleet carrier. As for the ability to stock these ships for sale on your carrier, and this includes modules as well, the current bundle system was very much disliked, with 63% of people saying that they dislike this and would prefer instead to uh, be able to purchase individual modules and ships to stock. Overall then, the survey showed answers to 43 different questions. The full results to the survey can be found linked below. A little over three years ago, one of the most famous in-game Elite Dangerous community-run events took place. 
This was the culmination of a lot of storytelling that ultimately led to the death of the character Salome. If you happen to miss that event or would just like to catch up with the times gone, do take a look at the forum thread linked in the video description where last week elite author Drew Wager posted a retrospective of the event. Also worth mentioning is Drew's continuing lore tour, again you can find this all linked below. A new Buckyball run is set to begin later this week, starting on the 9th of May and running until the 17th of May. Players will be set the task to track down life forms in this latest race called The Signs of Life. This race seems particularly interesting and also feels like a very good challenge. Naturally, as with all Buckyball races, there is a set of requirements and restrictions on how to enter the race, all of which are listed in the events forum thread. The race itself will begin at the Megaship Ferry in the Synwave sector, or alternatively at the Prospect Outpost in the same system. Again, the full details on the event can be found in the forum thread, which is linked below. That then brings us to the end of this episode of 3306. As always, thanks for watching, and I'll catch you guys and girls next time.